Hey, George, Kyle Posey, Niners Nation. I see you rocking Armstead shirt. So what's the message been like just with social justice to talk in the locker room lately? Um, well, uh, Kyle talked to the team and just kind of opened the floor to players. Um, and I think the whole team understands that everyone on the team is from a different you know, way of life, the way they grew up, um, their surroundings. And just uh, you know, talk to people, learn, uh, listen. And I think that's the best message that I've gotten, you know, what I've learned is, hey, just I don't need to open my mouth much. I just need to listen and you know, hear people talk. And so um, you know, Eric's been a great voice this entire offseason. Um, I've learned so much from Eric, just his background and how he grew up. Same with Richard Sherman. I mean, I've learned so much just from them. And um, again, like I just try to listen as much as I can because um, you know, that's all I need to do. And if I can listen, I can understand, then maybe I can help. Hey, George, uh, I know every player always says they want to get better at everything in the offseason, but obviously you've accomplished a lot to this point in your career. Are there specific things that you want to get better at that you have that, you know, maybe worked on in the offseason or specific points that you've been kind of uh, hammering home this offseason and into camp? Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the year, like you always go back and you look at, you know, your best games, your worst games, your best plays, your worst plays. Um, but I really like my entire offseason, I just, my whole thing is I just try to get better at one thing every single day. So whether that's conditioning, whether that's um, a certain route, uh, the top of that route, my hands in the run game, my hands in the pass pro. Um, and so that's just, I just try to get better at one thing. I'd say specifically for me, things that I focus on, um, you know, I'm in pass pro um, on defensive ends kind of often. And so like, that's one thing I can always improve at because like being like 240, 245 versus a 300 pound guy, it's kind of tough for me. So I got to slide my feet, get my hands inside. And so I watch a lot of film on that. Spent a lot of time watching like Devonte Adams releases, um, just how he approaches the game, because uh, I'm split out wide a lot too, and so I just try to dabble in a little bit of everything and try to learn from the best of the biz. George, just given the nature of this training camp and the fact it was a little bit shorter, um, do you feel like looking back on it now that that the season's coming, that you guys were able to to get the necessary preparation in, and and given that. Um, you guys do have some continuity and are coming off what you did last year. What what advantages does that give you going into the season? Um, I think one of the biggest things that allowed us to do was we, we kind of, like the vets and the older guys, kind of showed the, the young guys and our new teammates, free agents, how we practice and the standard that we practice at. And um, I think all of last year we practiced really hard. We practiced really well, you know, week in and week out. And that's why we were able to perform like we did on Sundays. Um, you know, a lot of that's on, you know, Coach Shanahan and how he structures everything and how he allows us to, you know, get our bodies right. But he just, it, he takes care of us, but he expects us to go out there and fly around every single day in practice. And so, uh, you know, when he gives us that time to recover our bodies, he expects us, you know, to go out and ball out. And so um, I think that's the best thing that we did was we taught these younger guys, hey, the expectations have increased uh, significantly from college to the NFL. And our standard is, we're, we're, our standard is way up here and how we practice. And so... You know, I think, like I said, that's the best thing I think we've taught the young guys. Uh, hey, George, uh, how did that week off from practice help you recover your body? And, and just kind of what's the vibe with so many, I guess, there's, it seems like half the potential starters have been doing rehab the last like week or two. Um, I mean, it, it, how do you kind of keep a mood upbeat heading into the season among those circumstances? Uh, well, the mood upbeat, that's pretty easy for us. You know, we have fun every single day. Um, it is fun, like, you know, we do have a lot of starters out, you know, rehabbing and stuff like that, but we're also very interactive in our practices. Like, we're always on the sideline. We're always, you know, chirping and talking and getting better. Uh, uh, one thing I will say, like, that I loved about it, like, you know, Charlie Warner got, you know, no preseason games, our rookies, like, they don't have a taste of what the NFL's like, you know, from Kinlaw to Brandon, Charlie. You know, we have a lot of guys that, you know, have never played an NFL game, and that is one way, like, one area where the preseason games really help. And so, you know, Charlie's been taking one reps for five days now, you know, straight. And the improvements that I've seen on him just in my tight end room are just enormous. And it's so fun to see because, you know, he's going to be out there on, you know, whenever we play the Cardinals and he's going to have a big role in the game. And I think without those reps every single day, I don't know if he would be ready. And, you know, when I look at him now, as compared to a week ago, he's a totally different player. And it's just fun to see that. George, you talked about some of the things you've learned from Eric just some you know, off-field social justice things over the off-season. Are there any examples of things that you can point to or things you've learned from guys like that or Richard or things? I think one of the, uh, like the story that stuck with me the most, uh, this was back in, I'd say, March or April. Um, Eric and Sherman both shared stories about like when, um, like growing up, 
like growing up when you you know you get your car and stuff like for me personally it was like hey like if you get pulled over george you know just pull over the side of the road be polite and everything's gonna go fine and for eric and sherm the conversations that they had with their parents were significantly different and you know for me like i mean i didn't know that like i grew up in small towns of iowa you know in the midwest like i didn't really grow up around that at all and so hearing their stories of how like eric arms had the conversation with his parents about hey you have to do this 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 and this and then like we just pray that it goes right for you because of that you're black and i just that was a crazy thing for me to even listen to because i'd never experienced anything like that and that's just one story that's very much stuck with me and um like i said just i try to listen i try to learn and i just try to be a better person from it George, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago having watched uh, Jordan Reed, a lot of his uh, film. What's it been like having him, you know, in the locker room, on the practice field? Um, you mentioned, you know, Devontae Adams releases, things like that. Are you learning things from, from Jordan, too, uh, now that he's right there in the locker room with you? It, Jordan's been – he's been so much fun to have in our room. Um, he's fit in perfectly. He's learning. He's open to coaching. Um you know, our, our offense, like, it's similar to what he had when Kyle was in Washington, but it, it's very different now. It's grown a lot, and he's learning, and at the same time, like, he's showing us, like, his releases that he does. Like, he had a, a choice route, basically, made a guy almost fall over in the stadium, and just, like, how he puts his feet down, you know, on his releases and stuff like that, and how smooth he is when he runs. It's just, it's awesome to see that again, because that's, you know, that's the guy I watched on film from a couple years ago, and this, just to see that he still has it and he looks really good doing it. It's just fun. And uh, he's been very vocal in our meetings. He's learning really well. He picks up the offense. Um, you know, I'm trying to show him what I, you know, I can help him in the run game stuff, and he's picking that up too. So it's just it's fun to see because we have a lot of weapons in that tight end room. And, you know, I think uh, a good, you know, four tight end set I think would be very good on Sundays. Hey, George, uh, some of a, a hey. random question, uh, but you uh... – you all had a uh, post Super Bowl party at the American Airlines Arena. If you attended, I'm just wondering, was that like the worst worst party you ever had, or was <laughs> it something cathartic to be among your teammates in that setting after the game? Oh, make oh, me relive man. it. All right, I love it. Uh, it was actually, um, I mean, obviously it, it sucks, but at the same time, you know, we did have a fantastic season. Uh, you know, obviously just in, didn't end the way we wanted it to end, but we did get to celebrate, you know, the whole season we had, you know, we had 13 wins, we had home field advantage, uh, dominated the first two rounds of the playoffs that we played in. And so, yeah, we celebrated that. Was it as fun as it could have been? No, but I still, I enjoyed the hell out of it. You know, I got to meet Lil Wayne. And so that was, you know, that was on my bucket list. And now I have a selfie with Lil Wayne. I'll post that at some point in my life. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. So, you know, I had a good time with my teammates. I know not everyone showed up, but like, it was really fun to get up there and just, you know, let it all loose and move on, honestly. Hey, George. Uh, yesterday, Kyle mentioned that after you had first met Charlie Werner in, in uh, Nashville, they, you said you had the right mentality because he was getting sick of all the past patterns. He wanted to run block. What, what's your uh, advice to, to Charlie to, to make sure that he could get off on the right foot when it comes to the run blocking in the NFL since he hasn't had that, that preseason experience yet? Um, well, Charlie, like, I mean, with or without me, Charlie's going to be a good football player. I mean, just watching him on film, watching his mindset and practice every single day, how he attacks it, how he wants to be better every single day. He asks questions. He critiques himself. I mean, he's, he's operating like a, a professional football player uh, as a rookie. And so that's really fun to see. It's, um, it's awesome. Um, you know, I, I try to help Charlie out. Really, the mental side of the game is, you know, physically he's gifted. Like, he's going to be just fine. He's just got to learn, you know, his steps, his hands. And, you know, once he's comfortable with the playbook, I think he's going to excel. And um, he's doing really well in the passing game as well. And so where I try to help is the mental side. Like, hey, Charlie, if you, if you mess up a play, it doesn't matter. Just go to the next one, man. Like, just flush it. Go to the next one. It, the great thing about football, there's always the next play, you know, unless it's the last play of the game. And so um, as long as you don't let one play snowball into the next play, into the next play, you're going to be a great football player. So, and he's done a really good job with that. Like, he's had a bad, he's had a bad pass pro maybe, and the next play he comes back and has three good run plays in a, in a, in a row. And, you know, he's ran a couple of really good routes that Jimmy's found him in team periods. It's really awesome to see. So, you know, he, he's he's fitting the mold really well, and he's also making his he's like making a name for himself out there in the practice field. So, I'm just looking forward to seeing him on a Sunday. Hey George, do you 
you said you work on something specific new uh, basically every day. Do you challenge those young guys with anything specific every day? And how would you say, you know, you are as, as sort of a, a veteran now with those guys? Uh, I think Embo does such a good job, my tight ends coach. Uh, you know, every So we've been doing like four-day blocks with um, our training camp. And after every four-day block, he gives all the tight ends like a note card with the three things that he thinks you should improve on. And the one in the run game, one in the pass game, and then one just overall. And so he gives that to us as something to him like, you know, hey, this is what, in my opinion, is the thing that you need to, you know, work on. And um, so I take those things for myself and I say, okay, well, if I need to improve the top of my route, okay, that's what I'm going to focus on today. Hey, my run game, my inside hand needs to be a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to focus on that in some outside zone. Overall, hey, conditioning. Okay, so I got to run a little bit of extra practice after practice. And um, another thing, like, so I mean, that's on Coach Embo. And then on us as players, you have to be, you know, you know, you have to look in the mirror and say, okay, what am I doing wrong and what am I doing right? What can I do better at? And you just got to little, you know, pick the small parts of your game and pick it apart. And uh, you know, that's what I try to do. And, you know, I try to do that in our film room so the, our you know, young guys see that and they're like, all right, well, I got to do that too. I got to pick my game apart so I can get better. And uh, I think so far we've done a really good job with that in camp. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I can't talk enough about Charlie, you know, the steps he's taken. I mean, same with Chase, like my other rookie, he's taken so many steps forward. You know, he didn't even know what, you know, what way was left, what way was right. And now, you know, he's gotten the playbook down. He's coming off the ball in the run game. Who, you know, so it's just fun to see. And you know, I think Coach Embry does such a good job of giving us these goals and these critiques um, just because he wants us to play at the highest level possible, and he's allowing us to do that. Hey, George, Trent's been on quite the roller coaster ride for the last two years. What have you seen that stands out from his journey? What stands out about like his perseverance and coming back, making his way back to you know a comeback for this season? Can you? I, I missed the first part of your question. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, Trent Taylor has been Trent. on quite a roller coaster. So just yeah. about his journey. Oh, wow. Yeah, talk about a roller coaster. Yeah, it was wild. I mean, I lived in the same apartment building as him. He's one of my best friends. And so, like, I, I knew how hard it was on Trent. Um, and, you know, every single day he just – he's like, all I want to do is play football, so I'm going to do everything in my power to be able to play football. And, you know, I think that was his mindset most of the time. And, um, I don't want to talk for Trent, but, like, I, I just know how – he's a hard-headed dude and he loves football. So every decision he made was, you know, to get himself back on the field. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons he's one of my best friends because he has that mindset and he loves football so much. And so it has been a roller coaster, but at the same time, I've seen him at his lowest and I've seen him, you know, riding it back to the top and just seeing him this whole training camp and how he's executed, how he's really hasn't missed a step and he's gotten better somehow, even though he missed it in about a year and a half now. And so he's just doing such a great job and he's such a fun energy to have out there because he is different. And, um, he's got his own swagger to him. He's got that filthy mustache that I absolutely love. And so He's just, he's one hell of a player and he's just continually getting better every single day. So it's, uh, it's just fun to be able to play football with, you know, one of your best friends. Eric, 